Well, welcome to episode three of the Journey of Grace podcast. I hope that it's an encouragement to you. Again, I want to thank you so much for joining us on our journey together, mine and yours, as we're seeing God uh, speak to our hearts, encourage our hearts, and do some amazing things. I, I really want to thank God for your prayers and uh, for your prayers throughout the night and the messages, the notes. I got a real nice sweatshirt from me when the church put together and said, I can't do it, God can. I'll let him. And I really like that so much. I can't do it. God can. I'll let him. And so just a praise report to what God's doing. I uh, had our fifth round of chemo now, and you've been praying for that. It's been so cool to see the people around the world praying on those days especially. And uh, of course, our family here too as well, praying and believing God with us for supernatural things. But I talked to my oncologist a couple of days ago, right before the fifth round of chemo. I have three more to go. Just 27 more days of chemo. And then uh, God will take care of it from there, too, thank God. But you have been so part of this journey. So he said to me, he said, man, you're doing great. He said, you're not the typical cancer patient. And I took some great, great strength in that. I said, I don't want to be typical about anything. He said, you're very robust. You're very strong. He said, I just feel like you're doing this, like, amazingly. And I said, well, it's because you have hundreds of people praying for you and for me. And he's not a follower of Jesus yet, but he said, well, I'm glad you're doing so well. But I thought what a great statement. He said, yeah, I'm not typical. There's a strength in me. But that strength is not me. It's really the power of God working through his hand and through people's prayers like you. So can I say this to you? I've said this dozens of times in our uh, interactions together. I don't like the word typical at all. So when he said, I'm not typical, I was really encouraged by that because typical means I'm just trying to eke out an existence or getting by. And on this journey of grace that I hope you're enjoying together, we want to have not typical faith. We want to have a different kind of faith that goes beyond anything we have sort of experienced or seen or known. And what's so wonderful is many of you have been writing me about your own journeys, about what God's speaking to your life in, and how you're walking through different things now too as well. So that's really my prayer for these podcasts. If they're encouragement, please share them with people. Uh, if not, let me know that too as well. You can always uh, just go to uh, to media uh, podcast at cagmedia.org and you can write, write a note there if you'd like to about it as well. But uh, hopefully and prayerfully, it's an encouragement and a challenge. And I hope to do both today if I can. So I don't know what the situation is that you're walking through, but I was praying about this podcast and I thought about some people Who's just been waiting for God to answer for a long, long time? You've been praying God to answer of healing or a family situation or a financial miracle, or maybe you're, you've not seen your kids who've been wayward come back to Christ, or maybe parents who've, who've wandered come to Jesus. So I just felt like today we should talk about God's holding pattern. God's holding pattern. And not just for me, but also for you. So a friend of mine, Randy Hurst, who's a, a wonderful evangelist, missionary evangelist, and really a missionary statesman, uh, called me the other day and said, Mark, I've been praying for you. And he said, I want you to know something. I said, he said, uh, we're, always in, we're always on a battleground and always in a classroom. I said, Randy, where did you come up with that? He said, I don't know. I just thought of it right now. But always on the battleground and always in a classroom. And that's so true, right? Because all of us are going through all these things constantly, and we are warring against the flesh. We're warring against the enemy. The Bible says that we're not just fighting against flesh and blood, our own self, but against powers and principalities and rulers of darkness. So all of us, whatever you may be facing, my diagnosis is different than yours, but all of us are in a battleground all the time, and the enemy's fighting, and we have to overcome and put faith over fear. So the same way the doctor told me, don't, you're not a typical uh, cancer patient. I don't want you to be a typical follower of Jesus. Do you? I want us to have faith that goes beyond what we've known and what we've seen and walk in new ways. I like Hebrews chapter 11 where it says, and these people walked by faith. And it was counted like to Abraham as righteousness. In other words, God said, as you're walking in faith, not typical faith, but like supernatural faith, it counts it counts to God, it counts to others. So when Randy said that, we're in a battleground, on a battleground, I get that part. And then also in a classroom. The classroom part, I've been pondering quite a bit lately. And uh, I'm just saying, God, what are you trying to teach 
me, us, through this time. It's amazing to me that there's so many times in Scripture that even like a prophecy is given of God's power and, and direction, but it might take years for that to fulfill. In some cases, like after Abram was told by God, hey, you're going to go into a land and your people are going to be so numerous as the stars, that was like 400 years later. It's a long time, right? You think, God, how long am I going to wait here, right? But God in his grace and his mercy says in that middle portion is a classroom of God's keeping you and teaching you and showing you his heart. And in my case, in your case, showing his faithfulness every day. Now, we have a tendency to sort of like uh, be more like up and down. And God says, wait a second, I want you to know that every day I'm going to bring you to a new place of my presence and a new place of my power so that you're not a typical follower of Jesus. So many Christians in our nation just walk through the, the cycle of walking through all existence. God doesn't want you to be typical. And so whatever you're facing, and in my case, it's something that was unexpected, uh, unwanted, of course, but God knows what he needs to do in me. So what's the classroom adventure that he's teaching you and me? And this is why I entitled this episode, God's Holding Pattern. And uh, just want to be transparent with you during this time. There's been days, you know, God's been so faithful to me. And I have a routine. I wake up in the morning, I read the scripture, Psalm 91. I read other things too as well. And then I end with Psalm 91 every, more, every evening. But during that time, I'm saying, God, what are you trying to teach me? So this was like a week ago, I was writing in a journal, and uh, I just felt like I was on a holding pattern, a holding pattern. Let me uh, sort of describe that to you. Many of you have flown, and I've flown a lot, and uh, sometimes when you're coming back from a long trip, especially overseas, the last thing you want to have happen is as you're coming close to your home airport, all of a sudden the pilot will dip the wing, and you can feel it turning. And instead of going down for a smooth landing, He'll dip the wing and he'll say, oh my goodness, we're, we're going to circle. We're going to come around again. The weather's bad. Something's not right. So it's, it's almost like your heart sinks to say, God, all right, how much longer till I get home? Especially if you've traveled overseas and you're waiting to get home. I remember one trip, I, I had an interesting trip one time coming back from uh, Asia. And uh, basically it was, I got on a plane. Uh, it was, that plane was delayed. I got on another plane. There was a bomb threat. I had to get off the plane. And so the plane was like already like a half day late getting out, right? So then I had one more stopover. And then coming back to, to the home airport here, um, he, the pilot dipped the, dipped the wing. And I, I said, here we go again. So like for 45 minutes, we're in this holding pattern. And I'm tired and, and not, I, I, I don't get too grumpy sometimes. Sometimes I do. But I said, come on, I just want to get home. But I thought to myself that there's a holding pattern that in the flesh you can really let sort of the flesh take over. But when you look in the classroom of the Holy Spirit, what is he trying to teach you? So I'm on a plane or you're on a plane with me. In this case, it's a spiritual journey, right? So I have, I'm sitting in the back somewhere in the plane and I'm trusting a pilot I've never met before. I have no idea how good he is. I have no idea if he had good grades in school, if he had a bad day today. I don't know his mental state or emotional state, but he dips the wing because I know we're going to go around. So at that moment, I have a choice to make. I can complain, I can get upset, or I can just trust the pilot that hopefully he wants to land the thing too, right? Well, it just hit me so much that God, he just spoke this to me, that he is my pilot. He's the one that we can trust. So it's not someone I don't know, it's someone I've known well, and someone in the classroom I know more and more and more. I might ask you, you know, when you were growing up in school, high school, or even junior high, elementary school, what's your favorite teacher? Well, they impacted your life because they really came in, they, they spoke to you, they encouraged you. But here we have our God, who's in charge of all things. And the Bible talks about, in you, O Lord, I put my trust. So in God's holding pattern, it's different from mine. The holding pattern in an airplane is to say, okay, whenever the runway clears, whenever the weather's better, whenever the pilot gets the word from the ground uh, uh, controller that it's okay to do that. But in God's case, he says, I know what's happening far more than you do, Mark. And I would say this to you in your own life too. God knows what's happening far more than you do. 
Now I can see today, I can see I've got 20, 20 some plus days left of, uh, until chemo is finished for me. I'm excited about that. Thank God for that. But I'm believing God for miracles, supernatural miracles that the doctors could see, that those who are attending me could see that God has done a supernatural work. That's why I was so encouraged when the doctor said, you're not typical. You're not a typical patient. I don't want you to be a typical patient with God or a typical Christian who can't trust God. I want us to trust God even when we don't see the ins and outs of everything that's happening. So with God, if you're in the analogy of this plane, you're in a seat that he's in charge. He's not my co-pilot, by the way, guys. God is the pilot. He's in charge. He knows what's happening on the ground. He knows what's happening in the air. He knows wind speed. But he also understands this. He understands all things about my life and your life. Now, the hard part is this. He also knows what's going on in other people's lives around you. So what if God, in my case, is asking him that he's asking me to trust him in a holding pattern that I don't understand? Because maybe God in his grace wants to use this time in my life to bring glory to him. And if I trust him, he knows the best time that this plane will land spiritually and that I'll have full health and recovery. But even for you, I'm wondering if God is not saying for you right now, whatever you're facing, remember that God sees your situation, but he also sees the full situation of other people around you who are watching us how we're walking this out and how we're carrying it out. You see, for me, when I go through a, a holding pattern in a plane, it's like, okay, come on, let's do this thing. But God's holding pattern is different. And I want to talk about that for a second to you. And again, I hope and pray this is encouraging you a little bit to think about that God does know what's going on in your life and that God knows what's going on in your detail, your seat, but all the other seats on the plane and all the other planes around there to know exactly spiritually what needs to happen at the right time. And I think about global workers who will see this. You think, okay, God, how long until this happens or until this breaks? Well, it's not a holding pattern that you're doing nothing. It's God organizing the right things at the right time so everyone could come to faith in Jesus. And for your life and my life, not to be typical, to be a life on this journey of grace that points to Christ and shows who Christ is. So here's how God's holding pattern is different than I view my holding pattern sometimes coming home on a plane. It may feel like a holding pattern, but not with God. With God, he is holding me now. He's holding me. I say, Pastor, how are you walking through this? It really is God's grace every day, every moment. I was uh, received a great uh, uh, hymn from one of the gals in our church, and I did some backstory. I was an old, old hymn that most of you guys have never heard before, but it was called Moment by Moment. And uh, I did some backstory on that. The hymn says, you know, moment by moment, Oh, Lord, I am thine. So the words that God is taking care of me every moment. And I did some backstory on that hymn, and there was another great hymn called I Need Thee Every Hour. Well, when this writer heard that hymn, I Need Thee Every Hour, is a pretty, pretty popular hymn from years gone by, really, really good. And the writer of this hymn said, I don't agree with that. I need him moment by moment. And I feel like this for you, too, is really good. The song is a really great song. Uh, old, old, old school hymn, but really great. And I appreciate uh, the saint in our church who sent that to me. But I think about for your life, God's not just holding you once a day or once an hour, but every moment. So he's holding me now. He's holding my future. He's holding my family. He's holding my friends. This holding pattern that, that I'm in right now is God saying, this is not necessarily something that the enemy is going to win in, but God wants to use this for his glory. So I'm hoping that even in your own life, you understand some from few scriptures that he is holding you. So uh, I like so much the Bible says in Psalm 27, he's closer than any friend could ever be. Isaiah 41.10, don't be afraid for I'm with you. Don't be discouraged for I'm your God. I will hold you up with my righteous right hand. So God's holding pattern, so different from our holding pattern. Isaiah 41.13, I'm the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says, do not fear, for I am with you. Psalm 63, 8, my soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. Isaiah 46, I will be your God throughout your lifetime. I will carry you along and save you. And then I like so much that the scriptures, and there are 
dozens of scriptures about God holding us. And so when I did a little research on this, that God's holding pattern, that I'm not just stuck somewhere. He is showing me things that I could have never known before. My sister visited and, and my brother-in-law visited from Sweden recently. And she said, Mark, you're different than you were before. And I, I took that as a compliment too. Um, I know that physically my body goes through all these like sort of a um, roller coaster every week with the chemo and stuff like that. Uh, sort of like getting the liquids and then losing the liquids and, and then getting a little tired later in the week. But God has been so good to me. When she said that, I thought, I, I think I am different because that classroom of the Holy Spirit, he's teaching me things that I would not learn if I'm not going through this. So you say, Pastor, are you, are you excited about going through this? I'm glad that it's almost done. I'm glad we're getting to the end of it. But I'm asking God, would you please not let me waste it? Don't let me waste a moment. Isaiah 49, 16. I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. And I think about that, but God in his grace is holding me. And his holding pattern is way different than what I think. We get frustrated and say, God, how long? How long? Instead of saying, God, God, I trust you. I trust you with the outcome and with the timing. I trust you, Lord God, that you're answering prayers that I don't, don't see. And that's why I think about even global workers and followers of Jesus who, I don't want you global workers to be typical either. I don't want you to be a typical global worker. I want you to be a person who's so passionate to say, God, I may not see it yet, but I'm trusting the God who sees all things. I like Psalm 139. It says, even even where the most difficult parts of my life, even there, your hands will hold me. And then uh, Psalm 73, which is a great, great psalm, the entire psalm, it says, you hold me by my right hand. The right hand is always a, a hand of strength and always a hand of determination. And God says, I'm with you. I'm with you. So this journey of grace that you're going through, that this moment that God has us walking through together. And I go back to what your situation is, your family. And maybe you've gone through deep pain because of a family member's rejection or because you're going through emotional stress. Maybe some of you right now are thinking about, God, I can't make it another day. Can I say this to you? Maybe because you're living in your holding pattern and not his. His holding pattern is always secure. His arms are always strong. They don't get weak. They never falter. They never waver. So recently, uh, a wonderful pastor who has impacted a lot of people's lives, including mine, a guy named Tim Keller, had battled cancer for many years, the last three years or so. And, and uh, I, I love the fact that even as he was going through that, and then he went to be with the Lord just a few days ago, uh, he made such great statements about his faith. He had a way of conveying truth that was very easy for people who are even atheists to understand. And many people came to faith because of his just very clear, transparent ways. He said, I always, I never wanted to build a people, a church around me. He said, my, my, uh, my charisma was not that great. And he said, when I first started preaching, my speaking was not that great. But I determined to be a faithful shepherd and to acknowledge God's heart. And when I was wrong, I'll acknowledge I was wrong. And it really hit me. And then uh, later on, uh, towards the end of his life, he made statements about this. He said, if you really believe that Jesus is the resurrected Savior of the world, then your life should reflect that and you should live that. So I want to just challenge you with this. So you have to stop thinking about this holding pattern you feel, how much longer, God? How much longer? Instead of saying, God, Lord, I trust you. You know the days. You know all my days before one comes to be. He knows everything you're facing, everything you're walking through. There's, not, there's nothing taking our God by surprise right now in anything in your life. So when he said that, if you really believe, when Tim Keller said, if you really believe that Jesus is the resurrected Savior, that he conquered death, he conquered hell, he conquered grave, then that means two things. There's nothing in your life that he can't take care of. And I want that to be pondering your own life. So if you're a typical Christian, you're going to say, oh yeah, I know that, I hear about that. Don't be typical. Be a person who walks in resurrection faith that God, your holding pattern is way different than when I look at it. Your holding pattern is God, you're moving, you're speaking, you're working, you're active, and you know what's best for me in my seat, but also in other places 
around the country, around the world. And God, would you see, somehow let me understand, I don't want to be a typical, I want to be a person who believes in the resurrection power of Jesus. And that's why Romans chapter 8, right, if the same power that raised Christ from the dead lives in you, it will strengthen your mortal body. And that mortal body is flesh, mind, spirit, everything, right? And then he said basically this right before, not too long before he died. If we really believe that Jesus Christ is a resurrected Lord and he has prepared for us this incredible way, he said that heaven is not, is not some kind of consolation prize to earth. Or you like this so much. He said a lot of Christians think, well, I'll have to go to heaven then. No, as if earth is so great. Heaven is God's reward. Heaven is phenomenal. Heaven is what God has planned for us. So on this journey of grace, the ultimate end of our journey of grace is to see Christ face to face. And we all understand, that's not a consolation prize. Oh, good job for living a Christian life. No, no, no. That's the reward to be with Jesus forever. And I want you to think about the holding pattern. You may be in this life going through a lot of things physically, and I think about a lot of folks that I know personally are going through physical things, all ages, emotional things, all ages, financial things, all ages. And I think God in his grace is telling you, listen, I am who I said I am. I will uphold you. I will strengthen you. So if you feel like this is a holding pattern just to nothingness, God says, wait a second, no, no, no. I'm in charge. I like when Jesus was uh, getting his disciples ready uh, and he told his disciples, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place to you, for you, I will bring you back with me. I will come back so that we can be together forever. I like so much uh, a song we sing sometimes, Christ is my reward, the joy of my salvation. Well, he's not just the reward and hereafter in this reward of heaven and eternity with him. He's with you now. Your eternity has already begun. Your eternity has already begun with Jesus, especially when you made that decision to know Jesus Christ as Savior. And if you're, if you're wavering your faith and you feel a little shaky because you feel like the wing is tipping a little bit and say, God, how many more laps are we going to take around this mountain? How many more times until we land this plane and everything is good? And the Lord says, wait a second. I'm in charge. You're not. This is my holding pattern. I'm holding you. I'll give you the strength you need at the right moment, at the right time. And he's faithful in that. And some of you are receiving that right now. I just feel like there'd be tears in some people's eyes right now to let you know that God is holding you. It may feel like no one else is, but he is. And as you're trusting God, as you're coming closer to him on this journey of grace, I felt really strong on this episode three that God wanted to speak to you and to me both about not being typical. Don't be a typical Christian and don't have typical faith. In fact, Scripture says, have the faith of God. That's pretty big faith, right? Have God's faith. And then it says, have faith in God. So I trust him, my leader, my Lord, my supernatural pilot, to know when and how he's going to take care of me in why I feel like a holding pattern, but it's a holding pattern from him. So I want you to feel the embrace of the Holy One embracing you right now to say, there's nothing that you're going through, then I'm not with you. No matter what, Psalm 27, the Lord will hold you close, and he will. And in the words of Tim Keller, if we really believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is, then let's live like it as followers of Jesus. No matter what, the circumstance may change, he doesn't. The diagnosis may be a surprise, but not to him. What you're facing may be overwhelming to you, but he's holding you. Embrace that. I'm asking God in grace on this third episode. And again, if you enjoy it, please uh, share it with as many people as you can. And I'm hoping it's an encouragement to a lot of folks, wherever they're at in the country or the world, or whether at wherever you are in your situation. I'm trying to be transparent with my stuff just to let you know I understand probably better than I did three months ago some things that some people have walked through. But every day, God is teaching me new things about him and, and showing me new things from his heart. So if, if you like it, please share it. But I also want to say this to you. The Lord, who knows all details of our life and my life, of everything on your journey of grace, said, I will bring you home. So there will be a day that he will come back for us, either through a rapture 
or through a way of supernatural, uh, he'll take us home uh, through the rapture or through death, that he'll take us and we'll be with him forever. And that reward is worth this journey of grace here. That grace that will take us from sinner to one who is saved, that grace who will bring us home, that grace who will say, all right, I'm with you at all times, and I'm in charge. I'm holding you. Know it and live it out. So my prayer for you is that you'd feel his strong arms in this holding pattern in your life right now and be encouraged that if you're not in that holding pattern now, you will be. There'll be a time you're saying, okay, God, how much longer, how much longer? God, I trust in you. And you have to remind yourself constantly that he knows all things. He is the Lord who knows the end from the beginning. He knows this day, tomorrow, the future. And he knows ultimately that reward is him. So I want you to be encouraged and filled with joy and not be typical in your faith and not be typical in how you share your faith and not be typical how you walk out your own journey, even in tough times, to glorify God. And we love you guys very, very much, and I pray that this will be an encouragement and challenge for you. And again, if you can share it and pass it on to other people, uh, let us know if you like it or not, just at uh, media at CAG, just put podcast in there, and that, that message will get to me okay too as well. So God bless you guys very, very much. We love you all. Thanks for praying. Don't stop praying for us, but also we're praying for you and praying for every person who will watch this podcast that God will show up in a powerful way so that your faith will be increased as you look at Jesus who is holding you close. God bless.